Hello, I'm Colin Green and you are listening to Spike Pit episode 57. This is a special episode inspired by Ray Otis, Frank Turfler and comments on Audio Dungeon Discord by Logan Howard. On the theme of gaming with children, I've decided to record a session of... uh, well, we, we loosely call it D&D. It's Hogwarts theme, run by my nine-year-old son, who's a big Harry Potter fan. Now, I warn you, the session is long. He does like to run a long session. I've um, left it fairly untampered with, so clocking in at 60 minutes, you might want to whiz it here and there, or, you know... Uh, your mileage may vary but it takes me back to the days listening to it takes me back to the days when we were kids and um, yeah uh, he does a lot of stuff on the fly but without any further ado I'll leave you with our capable upcoming DM Matt Mercer watch out you're listening to the next critical role folks (laughs) what are we up to today then Sonny Question, I am DMing because I like DMing. You're DMing? Yep. And what are you DMing? Like a cross between Harry Potter and D&D 5E. And uh, how much 5E do you reckon there is in your version of 5E? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Good question, like 2%. 2%? I think that's generous. <laughs> There's dice. Aha! Yes. And we call it D&D. Yeah, so, so it's like 90%. But you've pretty much made it up, haven't you? Yeah, uh, and I used to play as handbook, so that's got to add an, at least another 2%. Yeah, use the, yeah, we sort of use the player's handbook, I guess, but really it's, uh, it's all stuff. Harry Potter up, isn't it? Mm. So what are you using for your monster manual? Um, as I, uh, my dad got me the Hogwarts library, so my monster manual now is Fantastic Beasts somewhere to find them. Because I put like some labels in, I put five in, for Yeti, Acromantula, Dragon, Phoenix and Troll. I don't know why my dad didn't know what Acromantula is. And what's... Uh... What's your favourite? Uh, what's your favourite monster then? Giant or dragon? So what are we doing about the fact that the giant is not in Fantastic Beasts? A book that my dad also found me, literally labelled giants. Okay, and that's really mostly pictures with some legends yeah. and stuff in there. The thing is, they're actually they look like they're hand drawn. Oh, they are hand-drawn, because um, back when that was written, nobody was uh, nobody was using computers or anything like that to do their artwork. That's all uh, prior to the uh, to the computer age, really. Yeah. I don't know what when I don't know when that was published. Yeah, that is a very good picture, though. Yeah, the front cover. Yeah. So what have we got? Let's have a look. It's illustrated by Julek Heller, Carolyn Scrace and Julian Win- Wingard. Dad. Devised by David Larkin. Does and it? it's a George Allen and Unwin book. I wonder if that's yeah, a it's date. Good. Right, um, yeah, it's got a date in there somewhere. Uh, Tag the most random. Well, this was a present for somebody in 1981. So this was around about the same time I started playing D&D and the... Uh, uh, 1980 it was published there you go Uh, and the first edition was in 1979 so right when I was starting out gaming didn't realise that you'd have been about 10 or something Uh, no I was younger than that I think I was uh, 6 or or 7 when I started Mm. something like that this is not very good so so we're talking about your monster manual, which is Fantastic Beasts. And what do you think about the fact that you've got no stats or anything in there? 
Oh, don't really mind me, Mike. Don't mind no, me. No, that's much. right. Because what have you got instead of stats? Luke Scamander's opinions and pictures. Pictures, yeah. I've got like how tall they are. Don't read that. It's because... all in the descriptions, isn't it? Don't read that because that's very important for this session. Oh, okay, all right. It's top secret, is it? Well, I won't look then. Just can, hold on, I just you, wanted to see some of the descriptions. You can read like Acro Mansion and stuff. So, and you've got some nice illustrations, some old style. Yeah, that's that a good is. one with the trolls and. Yeah. I'll show you my favourite illustration. What's your favourite one? I like how this is literally, you can't see this, but. Um, You'll be doing your own YouTube soon, won't you? That. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, so that's a dragon breathing flames. On rocks. Oh, and a dragon in the background in yeah, flight. There's, it's there's like a, baby a pen and ink drawing that reminds me. It's got a similar style to a, a sort of a guy called Russ Nicholson. It's a lot of detail, pen and ink. Okay. Yeah, and I've kind of gone with, I don't know whose style it is, but I know my dad does it. just puts tons of like... Like 50 bookmarks in a book. 50 bookmarks, yeah, that's true. So, what's uh, what else we got? We've got the Towers of Bard, Beedle. Beedle the Bard. So I thought you could you could use some of these legends. Well, what do you think you're going to do with this? Oh, well, they're quite interesting stories. Anyone that's read Harry Potter will probably know what the, um, like the Deathly Hallows are. And yeah, it's got that story and got a few other ones. They're kind of like in the wizarding world. They're kind of you know your Hansel and Gretel and stuff like that. Yeah, so it's like fairy tales and mm. uh, oh yeah, what do you call them? Fables. Yeah. Yeah, that's another one. Some nice illustrations. Lots of things to give you ideas, don't they? For yeah, what is that um, story called? They're called like. Um, Matey's Fables. Um. Aesop? Yeah, Aesop's, Aesop's Fables. Fables, yeah. I used okay. to love them when I was, when I was your How age. How the Zebra got its stripes. Yeah. They, he didn't do that one. What do you mean? I don't think he did that. He got how a rhinoceros got his skin. How well... Oh, Aes Aesop. Aesop. Yeah. He didn't do that, no? No. I like him. This is, is good. You could sort of take these stories from uh, Beedle the Bard and, and, and bring them into your... Yeah. Bring them into the adventures. Mm. So you're gonna you're gonna run us through a bit then. We're gonna where where were we? So I've got my character, Fitzhugh Malmora. Oh yeah, one more book. Uh, yeah, a very talk. very familiar book. Oh yeah. Called Player's Handbook for the Five E Edition. Yep. That's oh. yours now, isn't it? Yep. My dad gave it to me along with uh, these books and a lot of other books. Okay, so you all s sorted out. So how long have you been been a dungeon master for then, Sonny Boy? Well, for D&D, &D, well, for this one, I've only done two sessions. Okay. This is the third. Yep. And then I did some DMing of Maze Rats. Yep. For a bit. Yep. What did you think of that? That was pretty funny. Yeah. Because the pro there was one time that I absolutely hated... Because I was like, are you going to search him? Are you going to search him? Are you going to search him? <laughs> and I was like, and I, I didn't think you understood that you could still search him while you tied him up. Because he had like these two lockets around his neck and one gave you plus one dexterity and one gave you plus one strength. Ah, and you wanted me to find the goodies. Mm. I think yeah. Daisy was playing as well. You like a few magic items and that, don't you? Yeah. So I'm just looking at my character here. Fitzhugh Malmora, and he's in Gryffindor, because and he's a first level sorcerer, and uh, what is he, is, uh, what is he, uh, when you've got only one parent's uh, magical and the other parent's oh, um, a muggle? Half-blood. That's me, isn't it? I'm yeah. a half-blood. Yeah, so my guy's a half-blood, and he's got an owl called Fizzgig, I think that's and he's a little owl, as in... The I know you're out. But... Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Do you know where I've got the got the name from? No. I know there's a Skylander called Fisky, but anyway. The Dark Crystal, classic film. Is he actually a little owl in that? No, he's that little thing. He's that little furry thing that pops out and opens his mouth and goes, like that. and he's got that big mouth. 
Don't you remember it? I've not even watched that film. I'm sure you've seen The Dark Crystal. Never let it be said that I didn't didn't bring you up properly. Raise you up on all the things you need to need to see. Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, Never Ending Story. I have seen Prince's Bride, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. What else? Not not Force Awakens. Just oh what? <laughs> I like the Force Awakens. <laughs> um, oh, that's harsh. It's it's okay. It's like it's like when you copy something, but you just make it worse. Because it like basically copied a new hope and just made it worse. Nah. I, I disagree with you on that, mate. We we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> anyway, back to the character. So I've got a bunch of magic. Now you're gonna to have to explain this to me because I've because got I gave I've got you nine hundred spells. Transfiguration Muggle. What's that? Mm? I've got tra- I've got here I've got a note here that says transfiguration and then it says muggle by the side of it. Why'd you put that? Dunno. So then I've got Ray of Frost, which we got out of the player's handbook, that's a D and D spell, isn't it? Accio. One of my own. Well one of five potters. Is that a cantrip? Yep. And what happens when you when you use that? <coughs> You got that in your notebook, yep. so you got your little journal. A summoning there. spell that can make stuff come to you from two hundred and fifty meters away. All oh, right, so it's a summoning spell, right, to bring stuff over. Then I've got minor illusion and mage hand. The old player's handbook stuff. Player's handbook. Prestigitation. Player's handbook. Expelliarmus. Mine. What's that then? That's where uh, I get rid of things. Um, Expel things. Disarm. Oh, disarm. Yeah, I used that in the last... Expelliarmus, 1d6 damage and disarm and then the enemy. 1d6 damage and... Right. Then I've got Levy Corpus. Why don't they go back? Levy Corpus, 1d6 damage and this repels the enemy off you. So it kind of makes an imaginary field between you and the enemy. Oh, right. Then a couple more that I'm a bit more familiar with. Chromatic Orb and Disguise Self. Remember I used that Disguise Self, didn't I? No, what, McGonagall? When you could Remember I disguised myself as McGonagall because that, uh, that prefect was giving me some grief. The house... What was it there? No, I don't think it was a prefect. I think it was just the seventh year bully. Seventh year bully. So I pretended to be the... Uh, Professor McGonagall. Professor McGonagall. So that's one of the good things about Harry Potter, isn't it? You've got all the uh, all the different characters. So what's some of the... Um... I'm just... The only thing I'm lacking is names of people. You know them, though, don't you? Because you've read all the books. I know, but names for my own people because they're all out of Hogwarts now, aren't they? Oh, OK. But if you use the NPCs out of the book, who have you got? How many do you know, do you reckon? Oh, God. Is this this is this is still isn't relevant. I could go on for quite a while. Go on, let's see. I wanna just to, I just I am interested to know. Draco Malfoy, Lucius Malfoy, Narcissa Malfoy. I've run out of Malfoy now. Don't know. Well that is three of them, mate. I, I ran out with Malfoy, Malfoy, that's it. I only know Malfoy. Um I'm trying to remember their son. Anyway, um right, um oh. Millicent, Millicent Boystrode. I'm just doing a slivering first. Um, Voldemort. Voldemort, yeah, we can't forget Voldemort. Grindelwald. Grindelwald. The Harry Potter. Um, Ron, Hermione. Seamus. Seamus, however you say it. Seamus. Seamus. Yeah, it's uh, it's an Irish name. Yeah, he's like my man. Imam. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Right, um... Jason Hobbs does a, a, an, an Irish impression. <laughs> uh, I was still laughing about it. I'll have to find the episode. you you got to hear Jason Hobbs' Irish impression. <laughs> right, um... So, next on the list of peoples is Dean Thomas... Dean Thomas? Yep. Who's that? Seamus' friend. Oh, right. He's got like a 50-foot neck. <laughs> He's like a giraffe. Oh, right. 
Well, no. It's not really. It's not really. Oh, I know one. Hagrid. Can you stop stealing my next ones, please? Oh, OK. That was literally a the next on my list. So I know about three. Voldemort, Hagrid, Malfoy. And Harry. Harry. Hermione, Ron. Hermione. Ron. Ron Weasley. And there's a load of other Weasleys. Ah, I can't think of them. Let's go time to name every single Weasley. Arthur Weasley. Mrs Weasley. Fred Weasley. George Weasley, Bill Weasley, Charlie Weasley, Ginny Weasley. So I think it's safe to say that you um, you know quite a few of the characters out of the book and you can remember them all. What about the professors? Because we've been playing and, Aha! and the professors are the ones that crop up in your in your retelling of the I've tales. Got, I've got some uh, of my own professors. I've got a few professors here. In your book? Uh, yeah. So these are ones you've made up? Uh, no, okay, I'll, uh, I've, like, changed their position and stuff. Like, McGonagall's had master because Dumbledore's dead. Right. And Snape's dead. Right. And then I put Harry, Defence Against the Dark Arts. And yeah. then I... He was in the last session, wasn't he, because uh, we were fighting trolls. trolls. No, he's got a cave troll. And I got really? slapped down twice. <laughs> and then you went to dueling club, and then dueling just, club. Just see Harry. Just you got like... slapped down again. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. I thought I got slapped down. At, oh no, I, no, no. I did all right in that, but didn't he? Didn't Harry do something? How, how did I can't remember. McGonagall. At the end, he jailed on McGonagall, and then he did some like mad magic and stuff. Where some of the golden flames went out of his wand and like. You started making oh, money. that's right. Yeah, no, that was when I fought against the other, the other pupils. So <laughs> that was funny. My character took on uh, his friend, didn't he? I took on my friend, Albus. Harry's Harry's son. Yeah, Albus. And, Albus. Um, then you took on some third year, didn't you? You took on some. You took on some third year. Um, yeah, because I'm I'm a fir- I'm a first year, isn't I? Because yeah, first year. Right, is that enough waffling, or should we start the session? Or do we want Go on, to do some more? Start. That was a recap. Awesome. Do we want to do some more waffling? Right. So you we finished off um, after Halloween. You stay at Hogwarts for the Halloween because it's you only uh, didn't you say you only go home for the for the big ones like Christmas, Easter. Yeah, I said I'm gonna I'm gonna stay there and then I'm just gonna go home for the Christmas holidays to see my parents and Easter and Easter because normally we get two weeks off and for summer so that I can go on holiday with my my folks yeah, I have to and go my back family. For summer. Oh, they shut the day, Hogwarts? Yeah, you have to go back for the summer. All oh, right. Anyway. Well, that makes sense. Um, yeah. So, enough, you had a pretty uneventful... What's the word? Halloween? Uh, holidays. Oh, OK. Nothing really happened. You got, like, trick-or-treat in the Wizarding World. Basically, like, it's similar... But you just like go up to people's doors, and you know, like they pretend to things to grab you, like or fake zombie hands and stuff. Like in the Wizarding World, they have like proper zombie hands and stuff. Oh, they. So if you go trick or treating, in the Wizarding World, they actually do and, real magic on you. Yeah, it's like. So it's all tricks. And like, well, no, you still get sweets. You still get treats. Yeah, but like the Malfoys don't do treats; they always do tricks. They have, like, okay. when you go up to their door, check out a tree, and then, like, some tripwires come up and you fall over and stuff. Tripwires? Yeah. Good grief. Anyway. So you got, you could actually do that as an adventure, almost. You could almost mm. go on a, a trick or treat. I was thinking that, but then I decided not, because not many people are that stupid to do tricks. What, against a wizard? Yeah. No, it's probably not a good idea to try and play a trick on a wizard. Because you're gonna get you're gonna get it back in you mm. with bells on. Right. Anyway. Right. Go on. So it's so uneventful. In um, the wizarding world, you get quite long summer breaks, but 
Because you get like a month off. Okay. Which is something that can be a lot. And then, yep, you go into like. You start on the 1st of December. Mm hmm. And you basically go in. You uh, you have your first lesson of the day, which is transfiguration. transfiguration. And basically, yep. what you learn in that is you learn how to like turn your pets and stuff into water goblins. Turn your pets into water goblins. Hmm. Goblets. Goblets. Yeah. Okay, gosh. mate. And why are we doing that? Uh, because it's part of the transfiguration. transfiguration curriculum. So if I come up against anybody, can I do this on people if they... so? Not, I, not people, got... only like animals. Oh, only right. animals and things. Because I've got transfiguration. Yeah. And and can I, can I... So once I've learned this and done this lesson or whatever, is there a process for me to actually... In in your in your design. Oh well, no, that comes under transfiguration. That spell comes under transfiguration. So I've already got it. Yeah. So I can do that. And so I can take an animal and turn it into water goblet. Water goblet. Oh, but specifically that. I can't turn it into like a stone or. A, you can with other spells. A hat. If you want to. Okay, I was just thinking it might be... a bit harder, but... And Something I... like a water goblet is like one of the more basic things. So... And is it reversible? Can I turn it back the other oh, way? Oh, yeah, definitely. So I can take my goblet, put a drink in it for someone, and then as they're just about to drink it, I can turn it back into a an owl or whatever, and it can fly off mm. and leave the drink in their lap. Yeah. Or over their face or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. So... We're learning that in this lesson. Yeah, um, that's pretty usual lesson there. It's like, and it turns into the spells for inverted, but it comes under transfiguration. So next lesson, charms you, uh, Professor Flickwick gives most people in Guardian Leviosa that he gives you an Accio charm. It's pretty basic stuff. You have it. It's like the ringy thing. And yeah, this is a pretty uneventful few weeks of you get a few interesting lessons in care of magical creatures. You do water magics, uh you do what are they? What are they? What are they? So uh, you're referring to Phoenix. your uh, referring to your book. You do a bit about phoenixes and stuff, which after Hag you probably would know from your research. The phoenix is a magnificent swan-sized scarlet bird with a long golden tail, beak and talons. It nests on mountain peaks and is found in Egypt, Indian, in India and China. The phoenix lives to immense age as it regenerates, bursting into flames when its body begins to fail and rising again from uh, the ashes as a chick. The phoenix is a gentle, gentle creature that has never been known to kill and eats only hers like the Diriacal, see above, it can disappear and we reappear at will. The phoenix, phoenix song is magical. It rep, repute, yeah, uh, to increase the courage of the pure, of, of the courage of the pure of heart, and to strike fear into it. Strike fear into the hearts of impure. Phoenix tears have. Healing properties. Let's have a look. What was that other word you struggled with there? Uh, what was it? Uh, Rep reputed. Reputed? Yeah, reputed. And the dirical. Yeah. Oh, I've never heard of what that I is. Think it's, uh, a dirical? D I R I call. Dirical. Hmm. I want to so know. Have to look, I want to know if up. any of you know what dirical is. So, so that's got a special power there, a magical song. Yeah, I know. So what could you do with that? It's just like heightens the spirits and if anyone's Increase like... Increase the courage. If anyone's like evil, it kind of like threatens them or So, it's, so kind of, it's courage for... Go on, say what you're going to say. It's like kind of heightens the spirits for anyone that's like pure. Pure of heart, yeah. And then anyone that's impure, it's kind of like threatens them. Strikes fear. 
and it also says Phoenix tears have powerful healing properties. Yeah. So, it's so like, where could we get them from? Well, the Phoenix just has to cry, don't it? So, right, nothing really happens until nearer Christmas time. Okay. Where you're walking down the corridors, going towards the common room, mm -hmm. and then you see these two Slytherins, quite beefy. Yep. And quite a slim kid in the middle. You don't know these people's names. So they... They look like third year, fourth year kind of area. I and think... Then, go on, sorry. Then you see kind of this small brown haired kid. Which, Do I recognise him? No, probably no. in Hufflepuff. He's with them, or is this the one in the middle? No, 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 the, no he's just a bit ahead of him. And just as we're going down to the... Um, thing and the two beefy guys seem to just like grab him by the shoulders and shove him down the corridor and look back to see if anyone's seen this. And I've seen this, presumably. Yeah. yeah. And um, well, this kid they shoved out of the way is he in? Uh, is he in Gryffindor? Nah, you is reckon? He like, you reckon he's like Hufflepuff or something? Hufflepuff, they're all right, don't they? Yeah. So um, we think Hufflepuff are pretty cool. Everyone says they're a load of duffers, but. Oh, wow. That's no reason to go chucking them into the wall. So, uh, right, I'm not having it. I'm not having that. Um, so, have I got any of my mates with me and my, my budskis from the dorm room? Well, Albus, you see, coming up behind you and he sees you um, seem to be disturbed by something. And Luna's just walking past and Albus goes, Luna. And then he pulls Luna over to you, and then at that very moment, um, Albus put get a coin out of his pocket. Yeah. You notice it as a galleon, and then he kind of flips it and goes, puts it back in his pocket. Right. And soon enough, Teddy comes running down the corridors. Who's Teddy? I do not, um, Albus is like adopted kind of thing. He's uh, Teddy Lupin, and when um, Lupin dies. Okay. Um, so they're running down the uh, they're running down the corridor. Now I can't be seen to be casting any magic in the corridors, can I? The headmaster, the headmistress, probably let you off out of all the people. But how, how would how do they know if you've broken the rules? Oh, it's is there um, a thing? Underage magic because you're not seventeen yet. Yeah, but how? how how do, if they don't see me, so like if I did, so where these kids are shoving this, these older kids are shoving this uh, yeah, Hufflepuff reckon, around. You reckon that's why they're not using magic to just go <laughs> and shoving him down there? You reckon they're not using magic because they're underage wizards, right. and because in the headmistress's office they've got like an underage magic thing, A detector thing. Yeah. So they don't have to see you; they just know. Yeah. Well, whoever's in in every office. So as long as the teachers in their office, which they most of the time are. Right, so this is like a sort of security system. Yeah. That they've got. Right. Uh, There's also one in the Great Hall. Well, I'm not just going to... Uh, what else have I got? Just, uh... I'm just going to have to call these guys out, I reckon, and face up to them, because I'm not having it. So I'm just going to call out... Oi! You, what's your game? You leave him alone. He's done nothing to you. What's up with you, and bullies? Then, and this kid just turns around to you and goes, <laughs> "What? He's throwing magic at me?" Yeah, he mutters something under his breath, and where are my dice? Oh, so, so much for no magic, eh? Where's my D twenty? It's there. I've got. You can use this one if you want. What was that? Was and that you a miss? A yellow spark. Right. Oh, not spark. It's like a proper ray of yellow. Just points out his wand. Hits you square in the chest. Hits me square in the chest? Good and grief. I'm going down it, already. It, I've only... I'm about ten minutes in. doesn't immediately seem to strike you with anything. And then you start to notice you kind of like... Your hand just starts to tremble. My hand's trembling. Like your hand shaking a lot more than usual. Uh, um, you notice it's only your right hand, and that's well, no, left hand, sorry, and that's why it hit you. 
Um, um, oh. You can try and draw your wand with your left hand. Yeah, but I'm just gonna get busted. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get busted if I throw stuff. I could get thrown out of the school. Anyway, you hear behind. Oh, you. What are they doing anyway? So I've got this shaky hand. Have I taken any damage, or is it just making my hand? No, it's just making your right hand shake. You're not really sure. Is that my wand hand? Yeah. And Lula pulls her wand out and goes, "Stupefy! I want to drop my dice." Stupefy. She's doing that on them. Yeah. Can I cut? Oh yep, she hits, and the one who just hits you goes. This, and he's good. He's just laying on this the is the bit where you go dancing around the room and doing all the actions. Yeah. <laughs> and she flies back about fifteen foot. Wow. He sorry. And then um, he's stunned. The one who's hexed you. So, and then you see Albus. So is there anybody else? Is there any other? Is there anybody else in the corridor no, that's watching everyone, all this? You see everyone's park going up, gone up to their corridor. So these guys have timed this so that no one's around. Yeah. yeah. And then okay. you see um, Albus come from behind you. He's just come beside you and gone. It's my ass! Well, he stole my thunder. He stole my thunder. That's what I was thinking of doing. And then he's basically gone past and gone. It's my ass! And missed um, the other person, the other beefy bloke, by right. about a centimetre. And then Teddy comes around and goes, What? And tries to hit the slim boy in the middle. So what you fails. So what you're saying is nobody gives a monkeys about their school rules because they're too cool for the they're too they're, they're all too cool for this and I'm the only one who's <laughs> listening to the school rules. Is that about the size of it? Well yeah, pretty much. Well and, that, and then now you, you see Albus like blocking, like uh, blocking, swelling. Hold on a minute, it's, it must be my go now. And he's like, do something. Yeah, I'm trying to. <laughs> but the DM won't let me. <laughs> so I'm going to do the, the, the biggest, the big, I'm going to go for the biggest one who's hassling the kid. I'm going to cast Levy Corpus and... <laughs> Floating through the window. Yeah, I'll, I'll allow that. All right. Uh, where are you going to roll your Get him out of my face. I'm going to go, get out of it, you bully. Have some of this. Right? D20, yeah? Yep. Oh, that's a 10. Uh, I've got some bonuses. We had in my it? magic attack. Yeah, obviously. So is that plus f- Yeah, you've hit him. It's plus 5, isn't it? Yep. So that's a 15. There it is. Spell attack modifier plus 5. We're going for that, are we? Yeah, and you've basically pulled out your wand and go to Levy Corpus. And this person's like lying with their hands behind their back, just floating out of the window that's behind you. There ain't a big old drop out there or anything. Is he just going to dump him out on the grass? Uh, about a 15 foot drop. 15 foot? Just under. I probably should just lower him down then, because if I drop, you know. Well, uh, he probably won't hurt him too much because. Like you know, you, what you've noticed now is the Hogwarts ground has changed a lot from your father's description. It's like fluff of fluffy grass and stuff. It looks really cool. Oh, okay. So you think I'll be all right if I drop him? Uh, he'll take a bit of damage. All right, he can take a bit of damage. Just you know, just something to put him off of bullying people. Yeah, can roll a D four for me. Please. Go on in. Right here we go. Oh, yeah. it's one. One plus two for the drop is. Free. Free. All right then. Yeah, and then this other one. So still, he'll have to, because he won't be able to come straight back in now. He'll have to go off and find a way around, won't he? So. Yeah, and then you notice this other one's like, oh. and then he goes, stupefied. Uh, what at me? No. No, Albus. All right. Yeah. Uh, what does uh, stupefied do again? It just stuns him. Oh, that's right. And Albus goes. <laughs> And like gets just he goes about four foot backwards, okay, and just drops to the ground. And he's like, "Ha!" You need a YouTube channel, mate. You need to make a film. And why is it? Um, <laughs> and while this is happening, you just see Luna like just firing hexes, like stupefy, stupefy after him. Yeah. Hits the hits him first time. Just goes stupefy. 
and then he like because he was like running away he kind of just carries on running and then he just kind of floats in the air and flies forward into a wall Wow. And then uh, it's only the Hufflepuff kid that they were bullying left now. All right, I'll go over to him. All right, you all right, mate? Yeah, and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. I hate these kids. They want something to do with a map in my bag. They want your what? Your map? Yeah. How do you know that? Have they been giving you trouble before, have they? Oh, yes, plenty of times. Ah, oh, well, I reckon they'll think twice. Yeah, you can hang about with us if you like. Apart from the fact that I'm in Hufflepuff and you're by no. Yeah, well, we're Gryffindor, you're Hufflepuff, you're all right. At least you're not one of those old slivering toe rags. We don't want anything to do with them. And you hear I was smart. Uh, oh, no, I was saying alive, is he? Uh, well, he's alive, but he's stunned. And then Lily goes, oh, not my brother. And um, uh, she basically goes over to Albus and mumbles something like. Finet Helio Stupefius. And then sure enough he comes round. This is Albus Potter. Yep. Yep. Albus Severus. Possibly. Albus Severus Potter. Okay. Anyway, um yep. Yeah. And then apart from that, it's pretty uneventful. She doesn't even bother the people, she's just stunned. She's just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and then she just carries on to the common room of Albus Teddy and Matey. And, um, oh yeah, she turns, Teddy turns around and asks the boy, where's Hufflepuff's common room? Because you don't know. And he says, oh, it's down in the kitchen. Do you have to tap the correct bow? It's the one in, it's the, la, it's the one in the very far left corner. Tap the, tap the barrel? Yeah. And if it's you like a it, false barrel, is it? Yeah, there's like four barrels. All right. And, uh, if you get to, get through the wrong one, you get sprayed all over with vinegar. Oh, right. Is that something you made up, or is that in the thing? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's on Pottermore. On what? Pottermore. What's Pottermore? A thing that J.K. Rowling set up. It's got, like, tons of questions about characters and just things. It's got, like, what house was Hagrid in and stuff like that. Oh, right. So you find out more stuff from there. So that's another good thing, then. That's another resource that you I can... I need to download that. So that's another thing you can, another resource for coming up with your ideas and. Yep. Uh, but then this kid, um, this thin one, comes round and like, oh no. He ducks around the corner and then Lily yeah. rushes after him. Are you going to go after him? Oh yeah, definitely. And then you just go around to the corner and you see him quickly pull up his sleeve yeah. from his Hogwarts robe and tap something that looks like a dragon watch. A it's got like a circle thing, and then it's got like the head of you would know like as a Hungarian horntail. Which if you don't know, I'm not going to explain that because I'll explain it in a second. It's a type of dragon. Yeah. And that's one of the bullies. Yeah, the thin one. And he, then He's the one that had the uh, uh, split um, stupefy cast on him. Uh, on Albus, yeah. Uh, and sh you know, you notice your right hand stops shaking now. So this is not the kid I threw out of the window. It's the other one. No, it's the thin one that was in the middle. So and he's got a thing. So he's not a proper student. Yeah, he is. Oh, he is. Yeah. So why has he got a dragon thing on his arm? Oh, but it's it a watch. Have I seen these before? No. And then. What's he? T and he's talking into it. No, he just basically taps it, and you see it goes, like, orange. Oh, so he's, like, activating it. Um, nothing happens. Like... And I've never seen one of these before? No. You've, like... So do I know where he might get something like that from? You don't have a clue. You can maybe guess Borgin... Is he a... And... You can maybe guess Borgin and Burks, but that's a guess. Though. Is that in Diagon Alley, is it? Nocturne. Right. It's like Diagon Alley's for the good guys, and Nocturne Alley's like a dark, magicish place. I don't remember that. Is that in one of the films? Uh, yeah, Chamber of Secrets and Half of Prince. Okay. So that's like the the black market type of yeah, dodgy place. Yeah, that's, that's her nail on the head there. Okay. The old nail on the head. So, uh, 
But then again, finding stuff in that shop, like... So is he allowed to have that in school? Or is this a dodgy thing? Do I think this is a dodgy thing? Yeah, because you can probably guess. What about my... I've got good good arcana and stuff. Yeah, but this is, like, proper strange. For all you know, he could have made it himself. Yeah, but I don't think so. I think... I don't think he would be... You, You basically suspect it's got something to do with dragons and it's dark magic. That's basically all you ever know. That don't bode know. well. That that don't bode well. I know. And then now is it something to do with this map? I'm thinking. Uh, I, I'm I can't talk, really tell. What you. did this boy? What did this boy say his name was? I don't think you told me what his name oh, was. Oh, he, he's uh, he didn't tell you what his name was. Right, I'll he? ask him. Yeah, so. Um, oh, he's gone now. Oh yeah, he went to his room. Back to his room, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, then Lily, I'll look, keep my eye out then, for him. Then Lily just comes around the corner, still fight. He's stunned. Oh, she's done it again. And then she's she's hot with that stupefy spell, yeah. isn't she? It's quite. It's like Harry calls it a wizard. All right. So once butter. she's done it, I'm gonna re- I'm gonna dash over to this uh, slivering. Uh, what are you doing? Trying to get the. Watch? I'm gonna try and get that watch off him. As soon as you touch the watch, oh, your what? finger starts burning. What? Oh. Well, I'll obviously... Uh, I'll and then, like, very weirdly, it starts saying in weird voices, you are not worthy of the dragon watch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worthy of the dragon watch. Right. Um, and... Do, do, do I think I won't be able to get it off then? Can I... I mean, it might be a What stone. if I put my... Um, like my robe round it so that I don't actually touch it with my skin. And oh, then your robe just starts burning off. My robe's burning? Yeah. Oh, man. Um, then Lily I'll points like... at your robe, Aguamenti, and water comes all down it and then goes... Whoosh. She's good. She's a bit like Hermione, isn't she? Yeah, that's why I got the idea from. Ah, OK. And um, I'll say to Albus, Albus... Well, what are we going to do with this? Or if we want to get hold of this watch off this kid and, and take it to McGonagall. And uh, um, Albus says, I don't think there's much point. This seems dark magic, but I am not interested in. Yeah, but we can't have this in school and dark magic. This can't be good. We need to... Uh... And then at that moment, yep. you basically hear like massive like air swashing. Air swashing. Like a, a massive dragon. Oh, all right, so they sounded a bit... Yes, yeah. And off he goes flying around the room. And off flying around the room? No, you. You're going off flying around the room now. And then you keep on hearing this. It's getting louder. And then I was turned around and he's like... Oh. Ah, it's a summoning. He's summoning the dragon. Uh-oh. Right, OK. And then, sure enough, you turn around... Is there like an alarm bell in this school? Can we hit the like fire alarm or something? I know, but like McGonagall's already come. <gasps> what? The, what? And then she basically runs down the corridor, and you hear a dragon. Everybody to their corridors, except from Teddy Luke, Teddy Lupin, Albert Potter, Lily Potter. Um. Fits you. Oh no. And then Lily turns around and says, Hungarian Horntail! It's gonna be what? Hungarian Horntail. Oh, she's seen it, has she? Description of the Hungarian Horntail time. Okay. Do, 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 do. Supposedly the most dangerous of all cows dragon breeds. The Hungarian Horntail has black scales and is lizard like appearance. It has yellow eyes. Bronze horns and similarly coloured spikes that produce from its long tail. The horn tail has one of the longest fire breathing ranges up to 50 foot. Its eggs are cement coloured and particularly hard shelled. The young club, the way. Wait, yeah. yeah. Particularly hard shelled. The young club, the way out using. Their tails, whose spike are well developed at birth, the Hungarian horn tail feeds on goats, sheep, and whatever, whenever possible, humans. Woof! 
Uh, and then, at uh, that very moment, you hear another set of proper loud swishing, louder than the last one. And soon enough, like, quite a bony dragon just comes in, like, even louder. And as soon as it comes into sight, this Hungarian horn tail is about 50 feet long. Mm-hmm. But this thing is, like, almost smaug level. This thing just comes in, like, 90 foot. Okay. And it's kind of like a bone dragon. And it comes into the horn tail... And starts like slashing it around the head with his claws. What? And then does like a flip in the air and flies backwards. And like out of its mouth, it just goes. Oh, that's not something you see every day. And tons of <laughs> lightning just erupts from its mouth. And the Hungarian horn starts like. Oof. And it stumps, it kind of like flies backwards in the air. Yeah. And then, like. You've never seen anything like it. Like, just absolutely massive wave mm-hmm. of fire erupts from its mouth. And this dragon has just come out fighting. It's like... And it almost like... He's off again. Almost falls, like, down to the ground. <laughs> and then from the ground, it's, it's like proper killing a lot of stuff. And you notice this dragon... So what's everybody doing? Do we all... Sp- I mean, I, I think... I don't know if I should be standing here. I think I should be going for some cover or something before I get toasted. Lily, literally... I, you don't understand this, but the dragon shouts... Stupefy, the Hungarian horn tail. She, um, well, Lily is trying to cast this on the dragon. Yep. And she says, Eight stunning spells could almost stun it. Eight. So she wants me to cast the spell as well. She wants everyone to. Anyway, okay. and she says, "Oh was, yeah." And what are you mad? We'll get, we'll get fried. And sure enough, there's two dragons there. I know, but she says, "You're crazy, Lily." The hurricane, the Hurricanian Iron Belly is on our side, which she knows to be the proper ninety foot one. All right. Okay, I'll do read the description. The largest breed of dragon, the Iron Belly, has been known to achieve a weight of six tons. That's pretty big, mate. Um, slower in fight than the Viper Tooth or the Longhorn, the Iron Belly is nevertheless extremely dangerous, capable of cut- crushing dwellings on which it lands. Scales are metallic grey, the eyes deep red and talons particularly long and vicious. Iron Bellies have been subject to uh, constant observation by the hurricane wizarding authorities ever since an Iron Barry carried off a merciful empty sailing boat from the Black Sea in 1799. I think that, uh, yeah, that sounds like that's Ukrainian. That's a place, the Ukraine. Yeah, Ukrainian. Yeah. Yeah. Ukrainian. And, and do you know what a dwelling is? It's like a building, isn't it? Like a house, like yeah. somewhere you live, yeah, like a building where you live or dwell. Okay, good. Well done, mate. So, so he's on our side. Well, that sounds like that's a good thing. So we're going to cast, we're going to try and cast. And then instantly, Harry comes out with his broomstick and like, not one of these again, is it? And he just jumps on his broomstick and starts flying up towards the horn tail. Is it? They're all nuts in this story, I tell you. They wouldn't survive long in the, uh, mm. uh, what is it? Muggle world. Well, no, I was trying to think of something. Uh, it's like the Temple of Elemental Evil or a classic D&D module. I still don't think you understand how powerful Harry is, anyway. No, well, he's obviously, uh, he's got a lot more powerful as he's got older, because he's, he's real adult now, isn't he? Yeah, he's about 30-something. Yeah, OK. I think I put 34. Tomb of Horrors was what I was trying to think. We What's go rushing like? in. What's it like? That's like um, something out of... No, not Tarzan. It's from D&D back in the day. It's an old... Uh... It sounds like the Temple of Doom from... Oh, it's called. Oh, uh, Indiana Jones. That's one. Do you like that, Indiana Jones? Never watched it, really. Yes, you have. Temple uh, of Dune and Raiders of the Lost Ark. No. You've watched all the good stuff. What are you on about? Goonies. Watch that. You've watched that, I know. With the Thing. With that. Is he actually called The Thing? Uh, I forget what he's called now. 
I can't remember this stuff. So. Anyway, they have like the got pirate ship for the gold and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, leave the guy with some with a ball of gold. That's a proper good adventure. That is. Love that film. You, st- you, st- you haven't seen ET yet, though, have you? No. No, you need to see all these things before we can do kids on bikes. There's a game. Anyway, right back to back to where where was we at? So the dragon, we're getting getting uh, distracted. I'm distracting myself. Anyway, Harry hops on his broomstick and like. Oh yeah, that's right. Harry's flying up, but we got to cast this uh, stupefy spell. And you, you want Lily says she needs eight of us. So how many of us are there? There's me. And then, Lily. And then you hear Lily like, "Scrap that, Harry's got it." <laughs> oh, awful. And then he's th- actually she said, "Dad's got it," and he starts flying up there. He pulls out his wand and starts pointing at the dragon. <laughs> and you see the dragon has got a massive slit in its like chest, and he's like, <laughs> and then it goes, and then it turns around. And breathes like a massive wave of fire at Harry, and Harry's broomstick just like melts, and he's like, oh. So, have I not got um? Can I cast Levy Corpus on Harry then to stop him crashing uh, to the? Co- range. Well, I'll get to. Well, I'll use a move action to get nearer, and then. Oh, Harry's not going to get killed or anything. Yeah, but I'm still you casting see- it. I don't know that, do I? Well, you see that you can probably hear him. He starts shouting, like, random stuff. You don't really understand it. It's probably in, like, some weird language. Anyway. Okay. And you notice that he just kind of hits the ground. Yeah, like, well, he wouldn't have hit the ground if I'd have done it. I know, but he don't hit the ground. It kind of seems like when he says those weird stuff, he kind of just, like, floats. Like feather fall. Yeah. Okay. So, this slit across the uh, like he, he horn sees, dragon thing. Like, he sees more disappointed about his broom than himself. What about this dragon? Did he finish it then? With this slit across it? No, it's like, this dragon is proper boss. This is like top notch dragon. Right. Thing. And anyway, the, this is like, and then you can't believe this horn tail is doing this. It's like 20 foot smaller than this other thing. And you just, like, do horn tails. Like, and then you get back in business and just kills this other massive dragon with another wave of fire. And you hear McGonagall like, huh? And she goes out of herself and starts shouting in gobbledygook. You probably know hers, which is Murmish. Murmish? Yeah, gobbledygook. So that's a language, is it? Yeah, you didn't understand it though. Oh, right. Um, she talking to the dragon? No, she's just mumbling stuff. And then, like a silver light flies out at the end of her wand and hits the dragon. He's like... And the cut on his chest, it doesn't seem like a new one, but it, but the spell looks like it makes damage severer. And the dragon's like... And then... You see uh, Professor Flitwick running down the corridors and going, I'm not killing this thing. (laughs) And then he points his wand at a security thing just behind him. And to your surprise, you're like, how many dragons do they have in this castle? What, not another dragon? Yeah. Surely. Well, I'm going to chuck Rare Frost at this one whilst McGonagall's here. Uh, That's no chance. You can try, though. Yeah. Oh, what? The Hungarian Haunter? Yeah, I want to see if I can do a bit of damage on it. Because if everybody has a go, maybe we can defeat it, you know? Yeah, maybe. Bit of the old teamwork. There's no I in team. Do you know that phrase? Yeah, I do. Go on then, right. Oh, man, that's rubbish. Told you wouldn't do much. No, well, that's no good, is it? And then, this Norwegian rich back goes flying at it. And Hungarian Haunter just goes on. And the Norwegian workback just kind of falls backwards. What? And then at this, like, this school 
has unbelievable amounts of security. This is like beyond anything you've seen before. Well, they got her, haven't they? I mean, it's a it's a whole school full of wizards. You can't. Um, the dragons are flying. Can't somewhere mess about. And within like fifty foot in the air and stuff. Yeah. And then Flitterwick points to the other end of the corridor, and two massive. I mean, absolutely humongous giants. Two giants? Yeah. Okay. You, 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 at first, you probably don't even realise they're giants. Didn't they have one with uh, two heads in the film? Or am I getting that wrong? I don't think so. There's oh. a three-headed dog. Anyway, oh, maybe I'm thinking of that. Okay. Anyway, n- no one here recognises a giant as well. It's like 40 foot tall. And you know giants, they get up to about 25 foot. And then Luna, like, literally, I don't know what it is with Luna. She pulls a book out of her bag and says, Oh, these mutated giants can reach up to 92 foot. If they are extra mutated and have troll species in them. She's got Hermione syndrome. That's what's up with her. (laughs) Yeah, and then two of these 40-foot things just walk out with, like, 20-foot clubs and, like... And they're smacking this dragon, are they? Yeah, and and both of them just, like, swing their club at this thing. Actually, I don't even know why I'm wanting to hit. Yeah, they've hit a long shot. They've hit? This dragon has 25 armor class, by the way. 25? If you hit it Whoosh. at its normal skin, but if you hit the cl- at the car, it's like 15. Anyway. So I need to roll a critical... T- oh, if I- oh, right, okay. Well, that's anyway, not too bad. I could hit that with a 10. Giant just goes up. <laughs> I need my dice. Then I need a lot of them. Yeah, I did. Use these ones. Look, I've got them out already. What are you looking for? D10 and D12. Whoosh! This is for damage. Yeah. Whoosh! God, that's crap for him. And this, um, that's one of them. The giants. <laughs> and then. He seem to be on the verge of dying, and then the giant turns around like, <laughs> and these giants are like, <laughs> and just one of them just falls backwards onto the ground. Right. While the other goes in front of a swim with his club. This is the one that hasn't, hasn't attacked and hit in the. He just kind of goes. <laughs> And it happened to be the place where it's been cut before. And this reckon it looks like it could finish the dragon. And it has done rather nicely. Um, oh, I was just about to do another... 18. I was just about to do another spell. 18 plus... 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 18... Plus... Plus... 18, 9 and uh, 20, uh, yeah, 32 damage. And the giant just goes, <laughs> and basically it just falls, the, dra- the dragon like, kind of like swaying as it falls down. You can basically imagine how Smaug dies in the solution of Smaug. He goes down like that, does he? We don't we don't talk about that film though because it's terrible. And um Oh well. Uh it kinda of just falls backwards and crushes a bit of the castle. The school, like Hogwarts. Mm. So what's everybody doing? This is a bit I uh, this uh this is not a good thing. And then Why Lily is this... goes sprinting forward to tell Professor McGonagall that about... there's this dragon monster. She's like, the there's a dragon monster! Yeah, oh, yeah, boy, yeah. Dragon. Where and is then he? He came flying, and then, and then he killed the dragon. He killed the thing. So, where is that kid now? Is it, we still Stunk. got... We still got him? Yeah. 
Uh, so I'm going to make sure he's not going oh, yeah. anywhere. And while she's doing that, I'll be like, I'll stand there and I'm pointing at him going, yeah, look here, yeah, he's got it on his wrist. Look at this. He called that dragon. He called it over. Professor McGonagall, look. Over and here, then look. she comes up walking over and she's like, I should not be touching that. And then she like, when Guardian Leviosa is off his rich wrist. Oh yeah, that's the other spell. I've got that, and I? When Guardian Leviosa. Yeah, it's true anyway. Yeah, that's good. Right. And it flies off his wit wrist, and she's like, hmm. Oh yeah, I've got it. Out. Oh, if never, a, if never a snake was still here, I'd take it to him. But sadly, he's died. Um, so I could have done that. You could have. Ah. Right. So she's got it. And what's she gonna? So, so miss. Uh, and then basically, yeah, she's, she kind of turns around and goes, and then she a fireball. Kind of goes out the end of her wand, and uh, nothing happens to watch. And she's like, "I'll take this to Professor Potter." And then she storms off. So she's taking it to Professor Potter. Yep. And we're left there wondering now what's going on. Yep. And she then she turns around. Oh yes, go back to your common room. Ah. Well, what do you think of that, Potter? You mean, oh, Albus. Albus, yeah, Potter. And uh, he's like, oh, that was fun. Fun? Nearly got killed. Yeah, this kid, like. But this kid with his watch. I think. Uh, we oh, well, what's life without a little risk? I want to have a word with him. How do I unstun him? Can I do the reverse? Oh, Lily just goes. And pops back up. And he's like, the dragon should kill you. Yeah, what's all this with the... What's the where'd you get that watch? What's that all about? And you bet... Where's it gone? You don't need to worry about that. I want to know what you're doing with that. You've nearly got us all killed with that watch. None of your business. It's my business now. And then he basically shouts, Oh, Vada Yeah, that misses, like, horribly. You know there's the killing curse. What? And then, literally, within seconds, you know, all the teachers just got um, unforgivable curses... Watches and Flitwick just like seems to come out of nowhere and that's the little geezer. Yeah, and he's R two D two. And he's just gone. And if he goes, that was a bit ornate. What was that all about then? And he's basically disarmed him. Right. Sliced his wand hand off. What? Off the pupil. And pushed him into the back of the room. Good and he's grief. like, "There's a ticket to ask a ban for you." He's sending the kid to Azkaban? Yeah, lifetime in Azkaban, unforgivable curse. Is that what happens? Yeah. Wow. Unless you're Harry, where he uses Imperial like 90 times and then he goes to Azkaban. It's dodgy at this school, isn't it? I'm not sure I'd send my kids here. <laughs> Would you like to go there? Hogwarts. Would, you go, would you go to Hogwarts? Yeah. Would you? What, are you nuts? Hogwarts, the safest place on Earth, because we don't report the bad things that happen. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> wow. And they banned conquerors at your school, didn't they? Yeah, they do. Why don't they ban dragon watches? And there it is. If you've uh, managed to stay listening through the whole episode, congratulations. Thanks for listening. I know it's a bit of a long one, but uh, I hope you maybe found it entertaining and perhaps took a little bit of uh, inspiration from some of the things we, we did and had to say. And I'd like to think that perhaps anybody with youngsters might be able to use this as a, an example to encourage their children, you know, if there's any that are a little bit wobbly and not too confident, maybe by hearing someone of a similar age involved in the hobby that will spur them on to to have a try i don't know it's all experimental i've had to record it in three chunks uh so the transitions are a little bit iffy but anchor couldn't handle the one hour upload anyways take care catch you later